Sports. It's been a wicked good year for the Red Sox. Tonight, Boston takes on the Cardinals in Game 1 of the World Series, but it was a year, you might remember, that began with an unimaginable tragedy. Just moments after the final out of their Patriots Day game at Fenway in April, two homemade bombs exploded just blocks away near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. All of a sudden, surgeons were battling wounds usually only seen in combat, and three lives were lost. 29-year-old Crystal Campbell, 8-year-old Martin Richard, and 23-year-old Lindsay Liu. Then there was the manhunt that virtually shut down the entire city, forcing the Red Sox to postpone a game, a search that ultimately ended with suspect Tamerlan Tsarnaev dead, along with MIT officer Sean Collier, and led to the capture of Jahar Tsarnaev. Today, we got official confirmation of what our Susan Candiotti first reported back in May, that his dead brother Tamerlan was also implicated in a 2011 gruesome triple murder in Waltham, Massachusetts. But through all of this, including the sad news today that a young teacher was murdered just north of Boston, the city and their beloved Sox remained Boston strong. Victims are learning to walk and run again on their prosthetic legs, and the Red Sox are playing for the title. I spoke to Red Sox President Larry Lucchino in the days after the bombing, who talked about the team's pivotal role in the city's recovery. Well, we think it's important. I mean, baseball can play a role as the Bruins and hockey did last night. Uh, resilience that the mayor talked so eloquently about today. It's Bostonians will, will come together, and this is the uh, the wrong city to uh, to, to mess pick with. Up. Our Andy Scholes is here with a look at how this fall classic is bigger than the game. Andy? Hey, Jake. Well, this season has been a pretty amazing journey for the Red Sox as they rallied around the Boston Strong theme. You know, a season ago, they finished in last place in the American League East. This year, they had the best record in baseball. And while they certainly have talent, the emotions and team camaraderie that followed the marathon bombings are what got them to the World Series. In one simple, powerful phrase, the Red Sox' David Ortiz captured what the entire city of Boston was feeling following the marathon bombings when he said, this is our bleeping city. And ever since that moment, Big Poppy and his teammates, they've played inspired baseball. And this season, the Red Sox, they were more than just a welcome diversion from what happened. Fenway Park has been a sanctuary and safe haven for the people who were most affected by the tragedy. It's a tough time for this city. Um, you know, for us, we wanted to come here and uh, be able to play a, a good game so their, their minds would be off, you know, that tragedy for a couple hours. So, I mean, um, you know, but the city's strong. They all came together and uh, got through it. This has really been the only team I've ever been on where, you know, just the starting pitchers don't hang out. You know, everybody hangs out together. Everybody gets together. Everybody has a good time. And the bond between the Red Sox players doesn't stop in the clubhouse or on the diamond. This year, the team made more community appearances than ever before. And in the past, we've seen teams rally around terrorist attacks. The Yankees made it to the World Series following 9-11. And earlier this year, the Boston Bruins, they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals. And over the next two weeks, the Red Sox are going to try to do something that both of those teams failed to do, and that's finish off their emotional season by winning a championship.